Hi, I'm Mike. Every year on the ranch, each and every cow gets a physical. They get their shots, we check their teeth, their hooves, and we clean the drain. It's time to preg check and cull our cows on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Everything on the ranch has a job, from the equipment like the tractor used to feed to the fences and corrals that keep our animals safe and help us work with them to the animals themselves. The chickens who produce eggs, the pigs that will eventually be sold as packaged pork to the cows who produce calves that we sell in October. If even one of these things fails to do its job, something has to be done about it. Tractors can be fixed along with fences and corrals, but when it comes to animals, for example a chicken that stops laying eggs for some reason, then they become a drag on the ranch and its finances. A chicken that doesn't produce eggs costs us money in feed, and in the same way a cow that doesn't produce a calf costs the ranch money in feed, time, and veterinary bills. To keep the ranch productive, we take very good care of our cows. They are fed exactly what they need, and at the same time they receive vitamins, minerals, and medications to keep them healthy. Once a year we get a chance to bring in all the cows and give each one a thorough going over. At the same time we check to see who's pregnant and who is going to produce a calf for us next year. Each cow costs the ranch an average of $800 per year, and if that cow doesn't produce a calf, then there's no product from that cow to sell and justify the expense. But maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Today, we brought in all the cows, ran them through the squeeze chute. Our vet, Kyle, gave each one a good looking at inside and out. But the day started this morning at sunup when I had to bring all the cows into the corrals. To get there, we have to rewind. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, raising cattle is a numbers game. How many cows can you support on how many acres? How much hay can you make to feed the cows through the winter? Or more realistically, at least this year when hay production was way down, how much hay can you afford to buy? And how many cows will that hay feed? In addition, you also have to have productive and healthy cows. The days of letting cows range over the countryside with little or no human interference is pretty much gone. In days gone by, many ranchers would let their cows roam, letting them live and die, some by natural causes, some by predators. Then occasionally they would go out and gather calves and bring them back to feedlots of their own or sell them to other producers or keep and replenish their herd. Things have changed. Now raising cattle is a totally hands-on process. Constant monitoring is required. Each cow is an investment in the future of the ranch. Not only that, but ranchers have realized that healthier and better taken care of cows produce more and better calves. As we bring the cows into the corrals to get things started, I can tell you a little bit about our plan for the day. Over the past few months, we've been getting a look at the cows, taking note of older cows that are starting to have trouble getting around, just like people, cows suffer from bad hips, sore joints, and arthritis as they get older. In fact, cows age much like dogs. A one-year-old cow would have aged 14 years in human years, and cows age four human years in each year of their life. By the time they're two and have their first calf, they are 18, and they reach 30 in human years after five years of life, and 50 in 10. Our cows will average about nine calves over their lifetime. The record for a cow, by the way, is 39 calves. I'm sure she was one tired cow. It's easy to spot the oldest cows in the herd. Even without my paperwork, where I keep track of all the cows' ages and everything that's happened to them from the moment that they arrived on the ranch. Older cows tend to hang back. They don't move as fast as the other cows, probably due to those sore joints and arthritis. Unfortunately for these cows, they're probably nearing the end of their time on the ranch. After the cows are in, we can let them rest for a few while we get things ready to start bringing them in for their physicals. 
First, Kyle arrives with his chute, a fancy hydraulic chute that'll make the entire process much easier and faster. We do have our own chute, but it's an older, manual chute. It's loud, and it'll intimidate or scare cattle. His is silent due to the hydraulics. After we get it set up and a few of the neighbors have arrived to help, it's time to get to work. That's one of the things that I love about being out here ranching. The community always comes together to help, and help is usually just a phone call away. Today we have three neighbors helping move cows, as well as Kyle the vet, Aaron keeping records and helping at the chute, and myself. As cows start moving up into the corrals and closer to the squeeze chute, they pass through smaller and smaller enclosures into a crowd tub, which guides them down an alley, just wide enough for them to fit into, and into the chute. There, Kyle uses the control levers of the hydraulic squeeze chute to first close the door behind the cow. Then he opens the front door of the chute, just wide enough for the cow to stick her head through. Then, he applies the squeeze of the chute, giving just a light pressure to the sides of the cow and calming her down. While she is in the chute, Kyle gets to work at one end while Aaron works on the other. First, she notes the cow's tag number. Kyle lets her know if the cow is pregnant or not, using an ultrasound probe that is inserted rectally into the cow and giving him a view of the calf and the status of the amniotic fluid. If fluid is clear, and he can see a calf with a heartbeat, then the cow is determined to be pregnant. If the fluid is milky, then she has more than likely aborted her calf. If a cow is pregnant, that's good news. Kyle will tell us how far along she is, which will help determine a due date, and she will receive a vaccination called Virus Shield 6, which will protect her from a number of diseases and illnesses, including respiratory diseases, a viral diarrhea, and a bacterial disease that can cause infertility, abortion, or illness. Then Aaron applies ivermectin, which is a poron medication that kills a number of parasites including roundworms, grubs, mites, and lice. Once Aaron is done, and we take a quick look at the cow to make sure she is healthy, we can let her out, where she heads back to pasture. When a cow comes into the chute that has a problem, she needs a little bit more attention. Lump jaws are rare but not uncommon in this part of Wyoming. This cow has suffered an abscess of the tooth and we're often not aware of it until the cow starts to grow this lump on her jaw from the fluid backing up around the abscess. They're constantly breaking open and draining. And once a cow gets to the point where the abscess is visible, there isn't a whole lot we can do for her. The abscess is usually caused by a piece of food, commonly grain or straw or something like that, getting caught in the cow's gum line and causing infection. Soon the infection enters the bone of the animal and causes a thickening of the lower edge of the jawbone. It can be treated with antibiotics, although the lump will still be there and it may affect her ability to eat. The infection can also cause abortions, which is what may have happened to this cow as she doesn't have a calf. Older cows tend to wear down their teeth to the nubs. These cows are called gummers and are not able to ingest the required nutrients from the hay that we feed. Nature works in mysterious ways though, as most of the cows that we have these issues with don't get pregnant anyway and will be sold from the ranch. Cows that aren't pregnant or are gonna be sold for another reason will not be allowed to go back out onto pasture and will be pushed into a corral where they will be kept until it's time to take them to auction. This process continues for over 150 cows and lasts almost five hours, bringing a cow in, checking her for pregnancy, giving her vaccinations, and out the door. After they leave the chute, some cows, especially the younger ones that haven't been through this before, they tend to get a bit squirrely. Even though they're always gonna go where they're supposed to go, hopefully. After being cooped up for hours, you can only imagine how impatient the cows are getting at the back of the line. 
they start to get riled up and working with them becomes a lot more difficult and dangerous. No one's gotten hurt today, but a few of the cows did decide that they were done with this BS and decided they want to leave. When a 1500 pound cow really wants to do something, there's really no stopping her, as this cow proves. Attempting to jump the gate, she has managed to get herself high-centered, which doesn't last for too long. But as I attempt to move behind her, and right when I put away the camera, she goes through the corral fence and back onto pasture herself. She's a problem for another day. She's earned her freedom because we don't have the manpower or the time to run after her right now. Only a few cows left to go in and get checked out by the dock and we're done. Silence falls quickly as the cows vacate the premises and move back to pasture. Then it's time to pack up, get Kyle's chute loaded and call it a day. I'm so glad that preg checking is over. It is my least favorite job that we have to do on the ranch with the cows. It's always done the end of October, the end of November. The weather is never good. We can have 50 degrees and sunshine the day before, and when it's time to preg check, the wind is gonna blow 30 and it's gonna snow. You'll notice in some of the videos, there's a four-wheeler holding up panels. The wind was literally pushing the panels over. I couldn't get a tripod to stand up. My paperwork kept blowing away. By the end of it, I was a frozen popsicle. Kyle had one warm arm and one cold arm. <laughs> it was a rough day for us. Culling cows is the process of removing breeding stock from the herd. And as you saw, it can be for a number of different reasons. A cow that isn't pregnant just costs us money and a cow with medical issues and, or an old age becomes a very high expense. But what happens to these cows that are gonna be removed from the ranch? Well, all of them are gonna be taken to auction where they'll be sold. Buyers will come to buy cull cows for a number of reasons. Some of these cows may go on to have more calves as smaller operations have more time to deal with the older and high maintenance cows. Some, however, will be sold for slaughter and that's sometimes just the way it is. Today, we had bad news for a few of our oldest friends. Both of our white cows will be leaving the herd, along with a cow that we've always just called butt stain due to her birthmark. According to most vets, culling your herd is one of the most important steps you can take towards herd health. When you remove cows that have issues, whether it being the fact they didn't get pregnant or they have a bad hoof or sore joints, you are cleaning up the genetic qualities of the herd. In addition, you're controlling the spending on the ranch, saving money by not feeding and caring for an animal that isn't gonna produce. Everything on the ranch has a job, including me and Aaron. And when you can't do it, you get replaced by those who can. After all, it's just like any other business. Thanks for hanging out with us today as we perform a vital chore on the ranch. Make sure you subscribe and watch out for more videos. Of course, our Sunday ranch video every Sunday morning. Tuesdays, we have our project board video where you can head out and help with chores. And every Thursday, you can look forward to either a video from our live stream or Aaron in the garden or the kitchen. Remember, through hard work, great things happen. Have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.